There's no doubt that visual analysis in Excel is just cool. But if you're an Excel beginner, what charts do you actually need to know? In this video, I'm going to take you through the main three charts in Excel, pie chart, line chart, column and bar chart. I'm going to show you when you should use each one. I'm also going to give you my top tips for making each chart look really good. But if we're meeting for the first time, a big welcome to Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I'm Chris Mortimer. I love bringing the powerful things in Excel to people like you. Are you going to download the download file and work along with me? Let's get into this one. I've tried to summarize it on a single slide. So we've got pie, line, bar and column. We're going to deal with pie charts first. I love a pie chart. When should you be using a pie chart? Can we bring back the pie chart? When you want to convey a sense of proportion within a containing whole, proportion within a containing whole. So this kind of question, what proportion of people answered yes or no to this question? For example, of all voters, what proportion voted for candidate X? So in each of those examples, there's a containing whole, you know, all of the electorate, all of the voters, for example, we want to com communicate that sense of proportion. So with that said, let's get into the download file and we're going to look at the salary data sheet here. Now, one point with pie charts and any other chart is preparation is absolutely key. Make sure you prepare the data first. Then the actual chart building is pretty easy. What do you need to prepare the data? You need the Cantif formula or the frequency formula. Check out the YouTube card above me now for one of those videos. Both links are in the video description. You just have to know these formulae. What are we doing in this example? We're counting the number of times north, south, east and west appears in column C. We've got about 5,000 items of data there. We can do it so easily using the Cantif formula. So we've prepared our data. Don't try to do a chart without preparing the data first. But if our data is prepared like this, we can then go ahead, pre-select all of the data. This is the next tip. Make sure you pre-select all of the data before you insert a chart. The data is pre-selected. I'm going to insert. Now I'm just going to click on pie chart here. We've got our options. I'm not a massive fan of 3D personally, but you can go for that if you want. I'm going to go for a nice, simple 2D pie chart. So how about that? That's how easy it is if you can pre-prepare the data first. So let's go through some tips now. Let's go through some tips for optimizing the appearance of a pie chart. Firstly, I'm not sure you need a legend or a key down here. This is called a legend or a key. Personally, I delete it. I'll replace it with something else that I'll show you in just a second. So I've clicked on the key there. Just hit delete. So what would you prepare, uh, replace that with? Well, if you go to chart design, then add chart element. Are you using data labels? Are you using data labels in your charts? I love data labels because they allow us to avoid overcluttering charts with things like keys and legends. I'm going to go for inside center here. And you can see we've got some values appearing on the chart. So what are they? Well, they're actually the values from the table. Just look across the table here. How cool is that? I'm going to click on the data labels. I want to just tweak the formatting a bit. So I've clicked on the data labels. Then we can go to format selection, a great feature with Excel charts. You can click on anything in the chart in order to tweak the formatting. Hit on format selection. I'm going to go for percentage and category name. I'm not going to actually use a value here. So you can see with the data labels, I think we've managed to really improve the presentation of the chart. Do you need a chart title? Well, if your chart is arranged next to the table, uh, that it actually represents it's um charting that data then you probably don't need a title at all i go for like the leanest possible solution so something like this for me and you can see if you go to the pie problem sheet a kind of properly formatted uh pie chart but i do acknowledge that um some of this is definitely subjective what about some problems with pie charts before we move on too many too many pies or too many slices in the pie how many pie charts have you seen like this and we've noted on our main slide small number of categories so i would say four to five not 45 four to five categories maximum for a pie chart so how can you deal with that if you've got lots of categories you still want to use a pie chart great let's go back to salary data you can use what's called a catch all category here we're using the frequency formula check out the video in the youtube card and the links in the description below you have to know frequency 
you can see we're specifying the ranges to drop the data into. This last range is bigger. That's because it's a catch-all range. If you have a catch-all range, going back to the pi problem sheet, you can see with the data labels, this is the catch-all range here. You can still use a pie chart. We've got six segments here. I think we're pushing it a bit there. You can use a catch-all uh, segment to make sure you can still use a pie chart. So I'll go through things in this order. If a pie chart, if these things apply, then use a pie chart. Let's move on to a line chart now. now so chart data over time, is time a factor in your analysis? Do you want to chart data over days, months, years, or do you want to prove a relationship between two factors? Hypothesis. It's going to get a little bit statistical in just a second, but I promise I'll explain everything in simple terms. That's because I understand it in very simple terms myself. Let's get back into the download file. Let's head over to line no time, the line no time sheet. So this for me is actually a bad example of a line chart. Why is that? Because when we're using a line chart, we're looking to interpolate, interpolate. We're looking to communicate meaning from one data point to the next. These could be connected in terms of time or in terms of some kind of relationship. We're going to see that in just a second. But you can see there's no time relationship. We're not trying to communicate anything in terms of a hypothesis here. So this for me would be better communicated using a column chart. And we've got the column chart example here. So that for me is a poor example of a line chart. What about some good line examples? Well, here we've got our betting data example. So this is the performance of a betting seat, a betting system over a season. You can see we've got time. We've got time along the bottom. One data point links to the next data point temporally in terms of time. So how would you go about creating uh, this kind of chart? Once again, preparation is key. And you can see we've got the months here in column H back on the betting strategy data sheet. And then we've got the profit and loss for this month over in column M. What formula is that? That's the sum if formula. Link is in the description for our data analysis formula for beginner series. It teaches all of these formulae. You're absolutely going to love it. So go, go and check that out. Let's look at our second uh, good line example. So video watch time, average watch time by age. So this is our second application, second reason to use a line chart. You want to prove a relationship between two factors. You have a hypothesis, a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a theory of real world behavior. My hypothesis in this case is the older the viewers are on the YouTube channel, don't worry, this data is just fictional, but the older the viewers are, the longer they watch the videos for. That's a hypothesis. It's a theory of real world behavior. And you can see with a line chart, we can prove that because we've got one factor along the bottom, which is age. Then we've got one factor up the side on the y axis, which is watch time. And you can see you could put a trend line to this as well. You can see the older people get, the more they seem to watch. So a second application of a line chart. Let's go ahead now. Let's try to actually put together a, a line chart quickly. So we've got to pre-prepare the data. We've got all of our ages here. That's great. We've got occurrences in the middle. I'm going to actually go ahead and just delete this occurrences column. I'm not using it for this analysis. Alt H D C on the Windows PC. That column has got. I'm interested in the average view duration. If we go back to our line chart, that's what we've got our, our average watch time in other words. So how would we do that? Let's go back to uh, viewer data here, pre-prepare the data, pre-select the data, control shift right, control shift down. Our data is now pre-selected. Let's go up to insert line chart. Then you can see your options there. Some of these have these nice data points on. I'm just going to go for the simplest option here. And as often, as often happens with a chart, we haven't quite got the perfect layout here always happens with charts. You should try to get fairly close, make a base camp and then make some changes and you can perfect the chart. So I'm going to go ahead. We don't need series one here. I'm just going to click on it, click on this series and just hit delete. And then we're moving closer to, to what I previously showed you. There's a problem with the X axis here, isn't it? We've got one to 53. That doesn't, that doesn't correlate with the data, which is 60, 16 to 69. So let's go ahead um, back into the chart uh, rather. And click on the chart here, uh, right click, select data. 
And then on the right hand side, editing the axis uh, label range, and then up to cell F8, control shift down, F8 to F61 is now selected, that's what we want. Hitting OK, and OK one more time, and I can now see that we've got the um, ages along the bottom there. So that's how easy it is to create a line chart if your data is pre-prepared and you're clear about what you're trying to do. What else would I like to see here? Well, I'd like to see a, a y-axis label and an x-axis label because that's not immediately clear. Uh, so let's go back to the viewer data sheet. How would you do that? I won't do it completely, but I'll show you how. Uh, go to chart design once more add chart element, then we're going to go to axis title. You can put the uh, horizontal title, uh, horizontal axis title, the vertical axis title in there. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and just delete this little legend or key there. So you can go ahead, perfect the chart. I'm just showing you a few options there. Okay, so we've spoken about pie charts, spoken about line charts. If you're dealing with time or you want to prove a relationship or a hypothesis, then a line chart is a great option. A bar or column chart, pretty much everything else. So this is the process I go through. Do I have a reason to use a pie chart? Do I have a reason to use a line chart? If the answer is no to both of those, then I would go for a bar or column chart for pretty much everything else, the most uh, versatile. And let's try to understand first the difference between a bar chart versus a column chart back into the Excel file. This is what a column chart might look like. This is again for our salary data. Fairly nicely presented, isn't it? But one slight problem is down at the bottom here, a very common problem we have with what's called a column chart. And this is the difference between a column chart and a bar chart. You can see we've got vertical lines here. This is actually a column chart. How many column charts have you seen like this, where it just gets crowded on the x-axis? Well, if you've got that problem, you can switch it to a bar chart. Well, you can either increase the width of the chart as I've just done, but a nice option and an underutilized chart in Excel is a bar chart. So change chart type, click on the chart, change chart type, and then we're going to go to bar here. And you can see bar means those lines are horizontal. This is a bar chart. So we're going to uh, hit OK here, and I've just converted that into a bar chart. The key advantage of a bar chart, bar chart is uh, you can see we've got more room to display the uh, the axis labels here and that they're, they're, they're more readable. They're more readable because they're displayed naturally horizontally. How might we improve this chart? Well, with column charts and bar charts, make sure the data can be easily interpreted. What value is this for, for more than 40 and less than or equal to 50? What value is it? This is a common problem with bar and column charts. How can we avoid that? Let's go to chart design here, add chart elements, and we're going to go to grid lines. And let's go for major vertical grid lines. And I'm going to go to town on this. Let's go for the uh, minor vertical grid lines as well. You can see those grid lines have gone in, makes things easier to interpret that. And you could do more. Remember our friends, those data labels. So you can click on the chart again, chart design, and then we're going to add chart elements and then data labels. Then we're going to say um, outside end, and you can see the chart is already easier to interpret, but it might even say there's a bit too much information on there now. So you could even go ahead, do something radical and delete the axis labels uh, here for the x-axis or for the y-axis. If you're talking about a column chart, and you can see because we've got the data labels in there, it facilitates this kind of very lean display. So how about that? Hopefully it improves your understanding of when to use pi line bar and column charts. Let me know uh, in the comments, what chart are you going to be using? And let me quickly, before you go, do you want to simplify your Excel practice? Do you want to get away from this madness of searching the internet, watching videos like this one, you know, asking the person at work who's good at Excel? I've simplified it all for you in our Excel basics course. We're going to give you clarity, confidence and control in Excel. It's 27 15 minute videos. I'd love to see you there. Link is in the description below. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.